Good morning, beautiful people. How are we all doing? This is White Raptor News Ministries. Oh, I got a lot of things going on inside of my head for my future, the last lap of my life. But this, reading this Bible and sharing the Bible and uh, loving God and loving the children that love God um, pretty much is, you know, my life today. So here we're um, in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and we're <clears throat> at the Ten Commandments that were given to us in Exodus chapter 20 as well. The Ten Commandments were given to us from uh, Genesis, uh, excuse me, I mean uh, Exodus chapter 20 verses 3 through 17. Those are your Ten Commandments. So we're here <clears throat> at Deuteronomy 5. Almost uh, at the completion of the first five books of Moses. And uh, we'll begin. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your, your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord your God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our ancestors the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. Well, no one can see God face to face. I know it's a hard concept to wrap your mind around a God that is coming to you in fire and smoke. Okay, that tells me that it's the God of fire and smoke. There's many other gods that were given a lot of power. If you can understand this concept, <clears throat> that the Supreme Spirit is the one that moves all things in place. Okay, he's the one that ordains everything. He's the one that make. he's the one that created evil. He's the one that created good. Okay, so the Supreme Spirit who created evil allowed evil to create this plane of existence and this is why the god that's in genesis 1 26 and 27 creates himself in an image of god this god creates himself in an image of god and then you have the spirit of god that's saying that you're not to worship any graven images okay so it was not with our ancestors the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are here, alive and here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire of the mountain. At the time I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I guess I'd be pretty terrified, honestly, if, if a voice was speaking out of fire. But then we got to ask ourselves, what God? Remember, the Bible, the God of this Bible right here is Yahweh. All right? Yahweh. Remember, folks, Exodus 15, 3, Bible Hub. Okay? This is why I'm putting the Lord. You see, th the Supreme Spirit... <clears throat> which moves all things in place, which pours out love, is not the same spirit on this plane of existence that is a two-faced God, a two-faced love. The Lord on this is the supreme self-existing eternal, and the definition for this Lord is Yahweh. Yahweh is his name. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Right there. The Lord is a warrior. Well, let's get down to where it says that Yahweh is a mighty man. Here, Lord Jehovah, the mighty man, a man and a warrior. Lord Jehovah is his name. Okay, reading further down, what do we got? Literal standard version here. Yahweh is a man of battle. So anything that is a man, okay, is not supreme. Okay, man dies. The flesh dies. The flesh is the walking dead. Okay, this system is the walking dead. Yahweh is a man of battle. Yahweh is his name. Now, one of the one of the uh, channels I listen to, Anaya Obadiah, you know, she's 
pretty clear that Yah is the name of the Supreme Spirit. Personally, myself, I don't, I can't say we're born into this plane of existence and all we know is what we've been taught by others. But I will say this, that Anaya is a beautiful soul. She's a soft-spoken person and you can just hear it in her voice that she's divine. I feel it personally myself. I find a great deal of warmth from her lessons. Just to listen to her voice is nice. Yahweh is a man of battle. Yahweh is his name. The Lord is a warrior. So I don't worship a man. I don't worship anything that's a man. The Lord is a man of war. Oh, dear goodness gracious. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Hmm. The Lord is a man too. So if this Lord is truly God, then I would have to say that this Lord, this God, this Yahweh, who tells you to destroy children and dash their heads against rocks and stuff like that, is not a God that I will serve. I don't care. I'll burn in fire before I serve uh, anything that is a man. Anything that is a man. I only serve what is spiritual. And it's that man that's created in Genesis chapter 2, which is the spiritual man. Okay? Um, oh, wrong one. Wrong one once again. Okay, here we go. Here, Israel, the decrees and laws I declare. Oh, I'm going to have to cut that out. Give me one second. Sorry about that. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Okay, now we're here with the Ten Commandments again. The Ten Commandments were given to us, I told you, in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 17. Got that open for us right here. Okay. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So we have both confirmation here. Who created the slavery? It seems kind of odd that you'd have one God that brings you out of slavery and then you have another God that creates slavery, right? See, this is really a spiritual war about the soul. It's It has nothing to do with your flesh. We have been captured and lied to from the very beginning of it, from our lives born into this plane of existence. Lies so big... They put them right in front of your face. And the way that you tell the best lie is put it right in front of someone's face where they can't see the forest through the trees. It's that simple. So, you shall have no other gods before me. Notice here that this gods here is plural. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7 Bible Hub. Sorry, wrong Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 1 Bible Hub. Here you have Deuteronomy 5 7. <clears throat> you shall have no other gods before me. Look, this gods here is Elohim as well. It's still a lowercase god. It's still these gods here, us. When Jesus says that you will know good and evil... It's us. We know good from evil. It's on our tablets, okay? The tablets of God are your left and right hemisphere of your brain, folks, okay? Your moral compass comes from outside of this plane of existence. The moral compass that is inside of you that tells you that if you're married and you're out fornicating with a prostitute, you know that you're doing wrong. You know that if you're caught that you are doing wrong. You see, a narcissist don't mind doing the sin. They'll, they'll lay in that sin all day long. What they care about is getting caught. And even in the face of being caught, these demons are so bad, they'll lie right to your face. And that's what these other gods are. This is what I like to teach you, is just because the word God exists in the Bible doesn't mean that it's talking about the supreme living spirit, the force that moves all things in place. The all you can see and all you cannot see. The visible and invisible. The perpetual, always in motion. The very power and eternal creator that moves all things in place. The one, the supreme, 
I don't know if the supreme spirit is even a man or a woman. I truly don't know. But I know that, that what I absolutely do know is something was permitted to create a host system. And that's what others got to understand is a host system was created from a lower God, very intelligent, and very powerful God, which was given power. And that tells us all in <clears throat> Revelations that the beast, the dragon was given power onto the beast. The dragon is the serpent, the serpent, the devil. Okay. It's all right there in front of you. And the devil was the one that was given power onto the beast to control the beast. Remember, the man, the God that created himself in an image was the one that was given dominion over all the other shit. And then a second man was created. And the second man that was created, a spiritual man, but it doesn't say that it was given dominion over anything, does it? No, it doesn't. So this is how you got to learn to read the Bible. Remember, make note here, God's right here, Elohim, plural of Eloah, God's in the ordinary sense, but specifically used of the supreme God. So there's something that's above God's here, a supreme God, as well as an uppercase uh, capital God is the same definition. It's the exact same definition. So this is where you're getting your other gods and your plural of God. So you shall have no other gods before me. You shall make... You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or the waters below. <clears throat> you see, we live into we live under a bubble. We literally live underneath of waters. They told us a long time ago. There, I, I've looked for it and looked for it. I can't find it. I really wanted to find it. But there was a show on America's Got Talent where this kid was using electronics and stuff, and he, he had a light show and these lasers that were kind of hooked up to his, seat, his suit, and and the, the stage was black, so all you could see is the light show that he was putting on with the lights on his suit, and it shows him uh, swimming through the oceans and stuff, and then he comes out of the oceans and, like, turns into... Uh, a starship and then the starship flies all the way and then it hits the firmament and it goes into another world of nothing but sea life and everything see that's a truth bomb that they gave you in that story right in front of your face because that's how they roll okay so you shall not make for yourself an image folks genesis chapter 1 verse 27 bible hub This God here, Elohim, again, is the same definition of the lowercase gods that I just showed you. So God, Elohim, mankind, created him, man, in his own image. Okay, and this is, you get this right here, man, then you understand, you can understand the entire creation story. Okay, this God, okay, this God here created man in his own image. This God created, look, him. This God created himself, a man, in his own image. Boom. Let me say that one more time for you. This God created himself, a man, in his own image. You see? And then, and then you have this God here that's telling you, you shall, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything. Jesus is the image. Colossians 1.15 Bible Hub. The Son, Jesus Christ, is the image. Jesus is the image. You shall not make for yourself an image. So the first God in Genesis 1-1 that's creating himself in an image of God is the fucking devil. Get it in your head. It's that simple to reach. Nobody can touch my lessons. I am the master of 666, all by the grace of the Most High, the Spirit of Truth. Okay, He's, I have devoted my, my last... 
four years now devoted my life to exposing who the beast is, to learn the riddles of the wise, to expose revelations and what's truly being said. No one can deny what I teach. If you could see the power that emanates from me, my force that comes from the spirit of truth, all praise and glory, all worship, all of it goes to the Supreme Spirit, that he alone is the one who can choose. He's the one that makes the choice. Why he chose me, I don't know. <clears throat> but this is factual stuff that I'm teaching you. Okay? So eight, you shall not make for your own self an image, is the same thing here, man. Is 24, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or the waters below. So here we have confirmation. What's happening in the Old Testament? It's doing the same thing as the New Testament does, right? It's it's reinforcing what it said over and over and over. That's what I've got from these five books because Exodus and Deuteronomy are very similar with one another, okay? Where Deuteronomy 5, okay, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. So here, here is a, a body, a piece of flesh, which is dead, by the way. Anything that kneels down before a, a body, let me show you something. Images of Jesus Christ. Okay. You kneel down before this body. Okay. You think of this body here as God, who's this God here who's carrying the Baphomet sign. Moses carried the uh, serpent, wore the stick. You bow down. This is an idol, folks. You get that? This is an idol. Jesus Christ is a piece of wood whittled or a piece of art crafted out of wood. He's whittled out of wood. And why do you think they call white boys in jail woods? You guys, they're mocking you. They're mocking you so bad. Terribly bad. Right in your face. You guys are worshiping a man. Flesh. You're worshiping flesh. Jesus is fully man, which is flesh and fully God. And then I, when I hear that, to hear myself say that, I'm like, really? And this, this God that you worship has to walk across the field, across the tree, uh, to find that there's no fig that's on the tree. So rather than God of love and light and pours out his love, on all of the earth. No, this God turns around and he curses that tree. Jesus curses the tree and it withers away. The spirit of truth, the living God doesn't curse. You understand? He has a, he is sent your soul here so in a plane of existence that he allowed something to create. You guys are probably thinking, how can this guy say that? Then there wouldn't be then there would be multiple gods. Well, there is multiple gods. It's the very first commandment. You shall place no other gods before me. The Supreme Spirit's telling you so. You shall place nothing before the Supreme Spirit of God. John four twenty four. God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Say it. Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. That's what you worship. That's what you give praise to. That's what you ask to come upon you is the spirit of truth. For I am a Lord, your God, am a jealous God, not a God that I'm going to worship is a jealous God, punishing the children of sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Understand now this Lord here is Yahweh. Yahweh is a man. Yahweh is translated from the Sumerian tablets from Enlil, Enki, the Samaritan tablets. I'm the Lord your God. Again, this God would be Elohim. Supreme Elohim. Supreme are, and the Elohim are who? Elohim are priests. They're bishops, deacons. That's who the Elohim are. They're angels. They're falling angels. 
They're the ones that are jealous. We're the ones that are jealous. We're the ones that are two-faced. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Stop looking at others and, and pointing your fingers to others like they're the problem. Nobody else is the problem. You're the problem. This world is based on your wants and your desires. You're the one that desires this world just the way it is. The same way that I desired the world when I was out in my sins the way it was. Today, I don't want it. Today, I want to destroy that beast that is in me. But showing love to the thousands of generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. So the Supreme Spirit of Truth uses Elohim, both good and evil, and it's these Elohim that are good that once wrote this perfectly beautiful manuscript because Jesus told you, do not give to the pigs what is holy. Do not cast your pearls before swine. Okay? He's saying, don't give this book to the, to the Gentile. What did you do? You started going into the cities and the towns of the Samaritans and the Gentiles and you started engaging in their their uh, their pagan worship. And what did you do? You took your book inside that pagan worship and by taking your book and interbreeding, intermixing the language, which is why it talks about this parable right here, Revelations 22.13, Bible Hub. See, nobody does it better. 22.13, Revelations. I am the Alpha and the Omega. So, this is telling us that the Alpha is Hebrew. Right there, origin, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. It is the finality of of the alphabet so if you have hebrew and greek what's that telling you that the languages have been intermixed intermingled with one another okay jesus is speaking here jesus is coming i'm coming soon he says my rewards with me to give each one according to what they've done i'm the alpha the omega the first and the last the beginning and the end jesus is the first what is this it's the first born over all creation. Jesus is the last. What is the last? It is the last supper. Jesus is the beginning. What's the beginning? Genesis 1.1 Then God, Elohim, created the heaven and earth. In the beginning. This is Jesus in the beginning. Jesus is claiming he is the beginning. The Spirit, the Supreme Spirit, gave Jesus power to create this world. The flesh suit. Fully man, fully God. Yeah, he's fully man, fully God. He's the God of the devil is what you're worshiping. Because the Spirit's telling you not to worship anything that is anything more than him. One God. The Supreme Spirit of Truth. Love the Spirit of Truth. Say it. Love the Spirit of Truth. Bow and ask for the Spirit of Truth to be on you. If you don't have the truth on you then you're walking in the lie. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. How do you misuse the Lord's name? By placing names next to his. You have had a memory wipe. You're born into this realm and you only know the names of the Lord, what you've been taught on this plane of existence. I would take no chance at all on calling on any name at all. You have Yahweh, you have Yahweh, and you have Yah. That is three different names. That means that you're taking a stab in the dark to what the Creator's name is. So I just worship the Spirit of Truth. Why is that so difficult? The Spirit of Truth, the Living, the living One, the Supreme Spirit. Ah, oh, I love the Spirit. I love what I can't see. I love what's on the other side of the veil. I love the Supreme Spirit. Not the gods of this world. Not the idols of this world. Not your idol worship. Not your star worship. Not your political star worship. Not anybody that's in politics at all. Not anybody that's in Hollywood. Not any porn stars. Not any fallen stars. Not any star worshipers. And not Jesus Christ superstar. 
Stop using names next to the Lord. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. You keep this holy day by not doing anything. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your sons or daughters, nor your male or female servants, nor your ox, your donkeys, or any other animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Now, remember, the Lord your God marched you out in the middle of the desert for 40 years. If you march the children around for 40 years of Israel, then how are you going to know where your homeland is? It's just a question. You, you got to understand, I love anybody that loves the Spirit of God today. I don't care what their nature, what their color is, of their skin is. If you are a servant of the supreme spirit of truth, I mean, folks, Jesus is shoved down your throat here. Very little. You hear everybody mention God, and in the minute they mention God, what do they do? They add a name beside him. And he's telling you over and over that he is one Lord. He is, well, he's one spirit. I am trying to cut Lord out, man. Hope that doesn't offend you and my listeners like Gravy Train and Allie and maybe Binky Boo, but I'm I'm in this Bible every day. I don't know what you guys are doing. You know, I don't know how much time you spend in this. So I know that my efforts after Brother Rap the News passed away and me diving into this has brought me clarity. I have a clear mind. Is it still difficult for me? Absolutely. You're in the flesh. You have, this will be a continuing battle the rest of your life if for every breath you draw. You're being observed by watchers that are capable of manipulating time. They're, ca they're time travelers. They're, they're capable of bending time and being in a space where you are without you being able to see them. They're telling us in Hollywood that they're that we're being watched. The Bible's telling you that there's watchers and stuff. If there's watchers that are watching us, how are they doing it? By by what they're telling us, time travel. Isn't that what it's all about? Everything that they're making anymore all seems about to be cloning time travel and space. Cloning time travel space over and over and over. They're shoving it down your throat over and over and over. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You know, I do a lot. For, uh, it's always a touchy subject, man, because I love, I loved my mother so dearly to my heart. And she just really let me down at the end of of life, man. She just broke my heart. She just totally broke my heart. And uh, she worshiped Jesus Christ. And for years, it wasn't just a little bit, for years I was trying to teach her this information. She would not have it. And it was just breaking my heart. You just don't understand how it breaks my heart today. To know that there's so many walking in the transgression of sin and they have no clue. They're such sinners and they have no clue that they're sinners and they absolutely believe this false story, this narrative that has been shoved down our throats since you're born into this plane of existence. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all day long shoved down your throat. Well, Jesus, I keep telling you, is the God of dead. You watch enough of my content, I'll prove to you that Jesus is the God of the dead. Okay? I do my lessons by keywords. I show you, I stack my lessons precept upon precept, line upon line. I back everything I say with scriptures. I don't talk conjecture to anybody. I am such a powerful person in this Bible today. I just shut Christian ministers down. Oh, I'm, I'm so tired. I just wish one time... 
just wish one time somebody would take these debate challenges that I'm giving them, but they don't. Why? Because I'm going after large platforms. You know, when, you, when you're when you a minister and you got 600, 700,000 people that are listening to you, the last thing you want to do is get crushed and destroyed about your theology from somebody who understands this Bible. Nobody can bring it to you the way that I do. You shall not murder. Do you know what that means? You give, you're having the commandments again. Here they are again. The commandments are given to you. You're After he he's sent you in, this God, understand, has sent you into the lands to slaughter people and take the land. You've killed everybody that's out there, the women, children, and fathers. The, you've killed everybody that's out there. And then he turns right around and he says, you shall not kill. You shall not murder. Hmm. That's a two-faced God. That's two-faced. He's telling you one thing, and then he's condoning it at his leisure anytime he feels it's appropriate. That is not a God that I serve. I serve the God that pours out love, the one that doesn't care what you do. You want to worship pagan worship? You want to do that? Then go right ahead and do so. But he's telling you the consequences for that. Okay? It's that simple. The Spirit does love you, but he doesn't. These Christians will tell you, don't hate the sin. Don't hate the sin or hate the sin. Really? What a bunch of freaking nutbags. The Supreme Spirit allowed something to create itself freaking evil. And he's telling you not to engage in it. He's telling you not to engage in it because it's all an illusion. Okay? You shall not commit adultery. What does that mean? It means all you men that are out there and women that are out there cheating on your spouses. Eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get caught. And and there's no question about it that everybody's having fun in their adultery until they get caught, until they're walked in on, and the game is over. And then your next thing you know, 25, 30% of your income is going out the door to pay for the adulterous act that you engaged in. You see, this this plane of existence has made it about money. You know, get caught in adultery, you got to pay the spouse. Right? In other countries, you get caught in adultery, they stone you to death. At least that's what we're told. At least that's what Islam tells us. Islam also says that if you you bash the name of the Prophet Muhammad and you're a Muslim in uh, Islam, they'll, they behead you out there. You can't talk any trash about their Prophet Muhammad. The bottom line is all these prophets, even Moses himself, went to war and killed. They're all murderers, but yet they get a pass. And this is where I get so distorted in, in the Bible that you have this God that's telling you one thing and then he's turning right around and he's telling you another thing. You know, don't kill, slaughter everybody in there, don't leave anybody to live, okay? Stop fornicating, folks. How's God going to correct you? You're in a plane of existence, you're a soul, How's this creator going to teach you between good and evil? Well, you have to create it first, right? <laughs> so ultimately, he's just sitting up watching all his creation. That's all he, he you know, he, he's created good and evil and good and evil are weaved within one another. You can't take away from that contrast. You take away one from the other, then you are living a lie. But if you had to choose between evil and good, which would you choose? Now, you ask a lot of people that on this face of the earth here, especially uh, a politician, they wouldn't be able to answer the question. Well, you know, Jim, uh, looking at it in a spiritual way and everything, I think that each of us, you know, Jim, should, uh, uh, yeah, you know, think of God as we think of God on our own, and um, God is what he is, you know, you can make any kind of God, Jim, you're, but, you know, uh, you know, you know what I mean, how I feel about this, uh, it's not an easy topic to talk about, another, next question, please, yeah, okay, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you see, on October 18th, 2020, when the cops beat the shit out of me, that's why as soon as my dad passes away, I'll be out there in the field, man. I'm going to travel across the United States. I'm going to go to, I, I'm going to get my book published. I got all kinds of things. I'm going to purchase a new car that I can do Uber. I'm going to, I'm just going to do nothing but 
throw myself into work for the last few five years of my life, maybe until I'm 70, retire at I'm 70. And, uh, you know, if I'm blessed by the spirit, I'll be able to have me a little what I want, what I want without having to worry about me. And then I can really feel good about going out and helping others. But this testimony that took place, man, where I got beat up by this law enforcement officers because they didn't like me out talking about C-O-I-V-I-D, C-O-V-I-D. That's right. They didn't like me talking about that to people. I literally got the shit beat out of me three years ago, tossed in the can, was in a rain for five days, put in a rubber room the first 18 hours and then another freezing cell by myself for another 18 or so hours. Didn't, uh, they didn't give me my medications, my Tom Solosin for three days. I couldn't urinate, folks. I mean, literally, I couldn't urinate. And then, well, I couldn't urinate after the, I didn't actually, I didn't take my medication that morning. So by late afternoon, man, I was already having a difficult time going to the bathroom. And then by, uh, by the next morning, I, I was blocked already, you know, cause I have, I've had prostate problems and stuff probably partially from all the drugs and shit and fornicating that I've done through the course of my life. This is how you get paid. When you fornicate and you lie, you're going to get paid by getting caught. Okay? If you're lying on people, then what do you what's going to happen? Then what do you think you get in your life? You get liars in your life. See, I don't want to hang out with liars anymore. I don't want to have any detestable people in my life like that anymore. I've been down that road. I've, I've been with plenty of nasty girls. Okay. Nasty isn't something that you want, but you know, with the seed of Satan on you, it's everything you want. See, everybody wants to have a nasty woman and turn her into a housewife. You can't turn a whore into a housewife. Okay. You can't do it. Eventually their demon is going to rear up. It's going to happen. And when it does, your life will be miserable. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desires on the neighbor's house or land, his male or female servants, his ox or donkeys, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in the land, loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud of the deep darkness, the deep darkness. And darkness is Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 Bible Hub. Darkness is evil. It's figuratively misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. So this God's even telling you straight up that he's talking to you out of the deep darkness. <laughs> that's some funny shit man and nobody catches this stuff I, I i'll go with my theology over anybody else's theology about this bible on the face of the earth i trust my theology more than i trust 80 percent of god's chosen children the israelites most of them are all giving praise and worship to this god yahweh and this God Yahweh is clearly the devil. Him and him and Jesus are in well, um Jesus Christ crucified. The lie that was grafted inside of the Bible was uh crucified. They're two di they're two different Jesus Christ. One Jesus Christ crucified is the great European white lie crucified on the cross, and Yahesh Yahushai is um of Nazareth, if there even was a historical figure. Jesus. So, uh, when you heard the voice out of the darkness, not out of the light, out of the darkness, the Supreme Spirit is complete light. He's total light. So why is a voice coming out of the darkness while the mountain was ablaze with fire? It sounds like the God of fire to me. It sounds like Satan to me. All the leaders of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Could this be the, the voice of God, the second God that uh, led Adam and Eve astray? The voice, the Lord. Remember when Eve says, the Lord has given me a child? That's this Lord here. That means that it was a man. And, or, or otherwise, 
that would mean that Eve had an immaculate conception herself. No, she was approached by the first man, Adam, in the garden. The first man, Adam, is the one that came in the garden and laid down with Eve. And the first man, Adam, is the one that's created in Genesis 1, 26, 27, the God that created himself in an image. And then the supreme spirit, the, the one spirit, the true living God, molded another man from the dust of the earth. And that one, after eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it died and it became an image just like we did. It was no longer, uh, it died. God said that you'll surely die that day in the day you eat thereof. And Satan told them, no, you shall not surely die. God knows in the day you eat thereof, your eye will be open and you shall become like God, knowing good and evil. So this God that's talking out of a fire, that's, you know, and fire what? Consumes. Fire consumes. And I think I'd rather have a God talk to me out of the water if he's going to talk to me at all. Not out of fire. No. Huh? Bring the water up on, on dry land and hover over the dry land without spilling a drop on anybody there. Wouldn't that be more amazing? I think so. Remember the movie From the Abyss? Yeah, that was another truth bomb movie too. Okay. And you said, the Lord your God has shown you his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a person can live even if God speaks with him, speaks with them. But how's this God? See, there isn't a voice speaking out of fire. There isn't a voice that's speaking out of the ground, okay? The voice is in your head. Okay, It's on the tablets, it's on your brain and you want to turn your brain into the mind. You want your brain to be one with the mind. You don't want to be part of the brain. The brain is the hive mind. You want to be spiritual. You want to be in light. You do not want to be in darkness. But now we should die. This great fire will consume us. And will we die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer? For what mortal has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire? Well, no one on this plane of existence. No one right now. No one on the, right now living today on this plane of existence has seen God speak out of fire. So you have to, you know, trust that what's being written in this Bible is true. I don't know. I think that they changed the living God into a consuming God of fire is what I think. I don't think that this is the true God of Israel. I think this is an imposter God. And I think that those children that are over in Jerusalem today, those Hebrews, they're Paleo-Hebrew Nazi German or German uh, Jewish nutbags is what they are. Okay, they're not the true divine children of God. Okay, we've been interbreeding the dead with the living for a long ass time. And that's why we have Nephilim on this earth. As we have, as we have and survived, Go near and listen to all the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard what you, these people, I've heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commandments always. So that it might go well with them and their child, children forever. So, is this plane of existence a forever plane of existence? When it spoke about a new heaven on earth, could have it been talking about this right here? Look at here at this image here. Okay, I guarantee you that this place right here is the devil's resting place. What is that? What does that look like to you? Outside of a, a guitar. I don't want to hear anybody. Guitar is not the answer I'm looking for, okay? Outside of a guitar, what does that look like to you? I wish I had not that they had an overhead of that, sh that picture there. Straight up over the top. What does that look like to you guys? Huh? You know what that is? I'll tell you what it is. You just got to have ears to hear the truth. That's the key. That's the key to the pit right there. That's the devil's site right there. That's where the devil lives. The Pope, who's what? The Pope is the viker to the throne, right? 
I showed you this picture yesterday. This here, if you look very close, is a dragon. It looks like a dragon to me. Okay. One second. Now, this picture I showed the other day, and a couple of you didn't get what I was saying. Been looking for this. What I was saying is this is the light of the children that are being born inside of this plane of existence. We are being light. And then we're captured in flesh suits. Okay. And then this here. Oh, it's not as large as I was hoping it would. But these are all a bunch of angels that are being melted down. You see. These angels are being born in from light. They're being captured in a flesh suit. And then the souls are being captured and melted down. They're being fed off of. And this is what they're turning into. A gob of goo. The children born into this plane of existence. This is the fuel for fire. Okay. So. This picture here. Jesus what? This is the key. Alright. What does it talk about a key? John chapter 1 verse 17 Bible Hub. Might be Revelations. Oh, real quick. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law was given through Moses. I think this is kind of where I'm going. Give me one second here. These three parables here are huge. This is John's vision at Patmos. He held in his right hand seven stars and a sharp double-edged sword which came from his mouth. His face was like the sun shining at its brightest. When I saw him, this is Jesus we're talking about, John's vision at Patmos. This is John. When I saw him, John, I fell at his feet like a dead man. But he placed his right hand on me, Jesus, placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead, and behold, now I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and Hades. Why doesn't Jesus hold the keys to life in Hades? Duality exists because the supreme spirit of truth is the only one that can deliver out of the hands. Here, Isaiah 43, 13. My witness here, I alone decree and save and proclaimed the supreme. I am not some foreign God among you, an idol. So you are my witnesses, Israel, declares the Lord, again, the Supreme Spirit, the truth, the living God, that I am God. Even from eternity, I am. Okay? Well, who's I am? Okay? I, I could go into a long lesson on the I am, too. He and none can deliver out of my hands. He, even from eternity, I am. He and none. He Who's he? He? She? It? Jesus? Even from eternity, I am he. Oh, I am he. Sorry, I was placed, putting a comment there. I'm reading it wrong. Even from eternity, I am he. And none can deliver out of my hands. When I act, who can reverse it? No one. See, the Supreme Spirit is the one that's ordaining evil to do its evil. See, the evil produces the evil, and then the Spirit gave you laws and commandments not to engage with the evil, and then if you engage with the evil, you get busted up, <laughs> and that's how it works. Go tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So, what if you were taught by nothing but evil on this plane of existence and good didn't exist? None at, none at all. There was nobody trying to do any good. Nobody trying to teach you anything. Everybody's out for their own. Everybody's 
eating their own children. People are raping their own children. People are sodomizing their own kids. People are doing the most horrendous, evil thing. What if that was going on in every household on this plane of existence? Because that's what they're trying to shove down your face. And the government, that's why the government wanted to get into your lives and your household so you could, so they could tear the family apart. So that they could get both the wife and the husband out of the household. Women have such a, a vital role in the child's upbringing that it's so amazing to me that they've just completely dismissed their role in bringing, in raising a child. Women have become, in America, have become nutbags in their roles to raising children and stuff. You are insane. You have fallen so far and you don't realize the gift, the, the, the gift of what it would have been to stay at home and just love your children and, and read to them and bring them into light and teach them about God, one God, the supreme God. You teach your children, you walk with God in light, he will bless you. He will use good Elohim to bless you. He will bring good people into your life not evil good people so that's how he this is how he's got to correct you so be careful to do what the lord god has commanded you do not turn aside to the left or right or you'll get hit in your fucking mouth walk in obedience to all that the lord all that the supreme spirit your creator has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. So I just want people to really know that I love all the children that love God. Israel has been um, destroyed internally by the fornicating and the crossbreeding. I know that that sounds awful, but it has nothing to do with color, folks. It has to do with the race of people that are the dead. Okay? Let me find it here. This is the race of the dead created on the sixth day of creation. So God created man. This man, he created himself in an image. And an image is an idol. This God that created himself in an image is the idol. The Supreme Spirit saying what? You are not to make for yourselves any idols. You're not to bow down before them. Okay? They can't speak, they can't walk, they can't smell, they can't do anything, they can't feel, okay? They can't do anything without you. You, you hear what I just said? You're giving your power to something that has to be carried in the street. You're giving your power to a piece of wood, something that has been whittled out of a precious metal. It's dumb. You're a breath of life, a living, breathing, living God, and you're bowing down before images. Please, Supreme Spirit of life, forgive me. Forgive me deeply. I Forgive me for my sins and transgressions against you. Forgive me for bowing down to that man, Jesus Christ. Forgive me for my sins, please. Keep your spirit upon me always so that I can walk in the light and so that I can share the light and be in the light with you please on the day of my departure from this plane of existence place your spirit upon me so that i can return home let me testify about the things i've seen about mankind and their actions today much love to all the children that love god white black asian indifferent i don't care if you love the spirit of truth i love you if you don't take a hike this is White Raptor News Ministries.